Hey, welcome back. It's the end of June, and I have a couple of extra personal time days that I need to burn off. And there is no place that I'd rather spend it right now than someplace out in those mountains. This has become my therapy of sorts. This is how I get right with the universe. So today we're heading up to a little campground right at the base of Mount Princeton called Chalk Creek Campground. In this episode, we'll hunt for buried treasure. Come on, Garnets, you're in here somewhere. We'll make friends with some of the locals at an old mining ghost town. What you got? What you got? <laughs> we'll take in the breathtaking views in Chalk Creek Canyon. And finally, I'll be cracking open my first geode. Holy crap. Nobody said it would be this hard. So stick around as we dig up the gems hidden somewhere between Buena Vista and Salida, Colorado. Hope you enjoy. So we're at a dead stop somewhere in the middle of the mountains. Uh, a little bit of road construction, obviously. Just past obviously. Cotopaxi. Just past Cotopaxi, so good time to just kind of can't interrupt my time lapse that I got going on my GoPro, so I'm just going to do the intro here. We are heading up to Chalk Creek Campground, guys, right at the base of Mount Princeton. We're going to go searching for some rubies, maybe hit a hot spring, and, you know, whatever else the, the area has to offer. I'm kind of regretting I didn't bring my fishing poles, though. I keep, I've been looking at this river, whole damn trip up here, and I'm thinking, every corner, I'm like, there's fish up in there. But anyways, tons of activities to be had anyway, so we'll see you once this traffic jam is over. Ah yes, nothing quite like the scent of fresh mountain tar. But hey, I'm not going to complain because at least Colorado is keeping the roads nice somewhere in this state. Before reaching the campground, we're going to stop at the almighty Walmart here in Salida, Colorado to pick up on a few of the essentials, firewood, propane, and among other things. Walmart Salida, and uh, we're gonna get some provisions, find some propane, and so forth. And oh, this guy's coming in real close. Hey, right under that tree there. Right under that tree. That's where Robert stayed. Yeah, okay, so I just fanboyed on traveling Robert. I like the guy. From here, we start heading north through the valley. To the left there is San Isabel National Forest and what begins a line of 14,000 plus foot peaks with Mount Antero, Mount Princeton, Mount Yale, Mount Harvard. Wait, is anybody else sensing an Ivy League connection here? With ginormous mountains surrounding you on all sides, it's easy to get lost in this 360 panorama. Oh, here's our turn. And here we are, Chalk Creek Campground. And already it's looking much better than it did in the pictures. Let's go get checked in. No, that's not snow, guys. We just happen to be here during cottonwood explosion season. Back in September of 2020, when we were really first feeling that urge to get the hell out of the house, this place was actually the first place that my wife made reservations at for us. However, those ultimately ended up getting changed to Kansas. Why? Well, because last year at this time, Colorado was on fire. So of course, it was in the middle of a fire ban. And yeah, we're those people that when we go camping, we want the full camping experience, which includes a fire, okay? And keep in mind, this was before the RV in the mountains. Yeah, we'd have been tent camping. Uh, it gets pretty darn cold up here at night. Kinda need a fire. All right. She's going over everything with me. This has okay. got a bit of a production here. First, we're gonna go get water and then we're gonna get escorted to our site. Okay, cool. Let's go get some water and get escorted to our site. <laughs> Why did I say it like that? Oh, you're gonna find out.
just in there. Damn it. All right, we've made it. Check this place out. Looky here. Private creek access, bro. Man, duh, don't, I'll, I'll explain that in a second. But for now, right here. And we're right there. Here, there. Well, I bet there's some brookies up in there. Man, I wish I brought my fishing pole. Okay, so we slightly, just barely averted disaster. Um, because I made the dumbest mistake I've made so far in my RV career, which isn't a lot. I'm sure there'll be a lot more. Let's see, let me show you. So, I remembered to fill the water tank this time. Except when I first started trying to fill the water tank, wasn't the water tank. It was the drain. Oops, it's all the water was going up into the sink and all throughout the camper. So we got everything out, got everything dried up. Well, after I filled the tank. I was scared, man. I was like, oh man, I just ruined the plumbing of this whole camper already. But no, no, it's fine. We're good. Don't know how to describe it. I can't tell you exactly what it is, but there is a distinct smell up here. It's probably a combination of all these, these brush or whatever they are, plus pine forest and I don't know. The air is thin up here, but it's fragrant. As usual on this first day, not gonna do much. I think tomorrow morning is when we're gonna head over here to what they call Ruby Mountain. And I think earlier I described it as rubies. We're gonna go look for rubies now. It's garnets, but they still call it Ruby Mountain. Then the hot springs. We're a little unsure about the hot springs. There's like a hot springs resort, but some people say that there's hot springs that are just like public hot springs you can go to. I don't know. Allegedly there's a ghost town uh, that way, I think. Like a legit ghost town, not like a touristy trappy ghost town. So check that out. As for tonight, food, fire, and alcohol. This is... <laughs> it's just gonna get better from here, guys. We're just gonna keep discovering places that are like, wow. I mean, there was already a bunch when we were coming up here. Seeing all these little RV parks that were right along the Arkansas River, and we're like, ooh. Oh, we gotta remember that one. Oh, go oh God, that one looks cool too. There's no substitute for just actually going out and while you're not out and about, kind of looking for these kind of places. Because a lot of the searches that I had done over the past, and granted, they've all turned out okay. They've been on, uh, they've been like Google Earth searches, Google Maps searches. Just kind of look for where there's ca campgrounds. And you know, this is another one where you know, you look at it from the sky, it, this, it didn't look like this. It does not look like this. It, this looks way better than what you see in the sky. Anyway, it's almost getting time for campfire. Cheers. Well, and that's pretty much exactly how the rest of the night went. So what can I say here other than sweet dreams? We'll see you in the morning. Good morning, world. This is a nice place to wake up. I mean, the subtle sound of that all night long was pretty relaxing, for the most part. It is nice out here, a bit smoky. This is the smokiest campground I've ever been in. Everybody's got a fire going and they, well, can't seem to get it going. It just smolders and makes smoke, but, uh, that's time to get some breakfast and clean up and go see what we can find in these parts. Well, we were just about ready to go on heading out over to Ruby Mountain there and find some garnets and we met our neighbors. They got a nice little lance over there. They gave us a little tour of the lance and yeah, I think it's, we, we need to think about getting a better trailer. And it's not because we're like bougie and need something bigger, better. We need a bathroom, guys. So just a little bit up the highway and a little bit off the beaten path, we come to Ruby Mountain. Now, if you know what to look for, you can find garnets and yellow topaz up here. And I am pretty eager to try my hand at some rock hounding. Rhyolite is what we're looking for. So I find patches of what I think is rhyolite and I start digging. I don't even know how big their average size is or I think it could be, I haven't seen anything sparkling at me. And digging. 
if there's any garnets in here, they're gonna be a lot harder than the rhyolite. So every time I find something in here that's harder, I'm like, maybe that's one. But no, it just turns out to be a harder piece of rhyolite. And digging, but nothing. Still digging. And digging some more. I'm starting to think this isn't what I'm supposed to be digging in. Ah, well, if there was a garnet in any of those, it's gone now. Okay, so Ruby Mountain doesn't have anything left to give, I think. Maybe you gotta spend more than a couple hours at it, but in the couple hours effort we put in, didn't find nothing. So maybe we're doing it wrong. Maybe I should have done a little more research into what exactly I'm looking for. But as for right now, I'm telling you, man, looks like Ruby Mountain is tapped out. So Ruby Mountain may have been a bust, but there's all these mountains to still go play in, and there's a lot of daylight left. So we're heading west, and we're gonna go see what is officially billed as one of Colorado's last remaining authentic ghost towns. Well, we came out here for a ghost town and kind of found one, except it seems to be a very highly commercialized ghost town. Yeah, not the real, well, I'm sure this is actually a real ghost town, but yeah, they've uh, decided to make a buck off of it somehow, some way. Well, we're gonna walk around, check it out. At the hefty altitude of 9,961 feet, well, we're just gonna round that to 10,000 folks, 10,000 feet above sea level, St. Elmo was a booming mining town that began in the 1880s. The lure of gold and silver brought more than 2,000 people to this town. In its heyday, these streets were lined with saloons and dance halls and brothels. But by the early 1920s, those mines were starting to dry up. And by 1926, they shut down the railroad running up Chalk Creek, forever closing down those mines. And this town was soon to follow. There's the shooters. This old schoolhouse is beautifully preserved. Honestly, this place is pretty underwhelming. Yeah. I like the I like the legit ghost towns. It sit out in the middle of nowhere and it isn't really a tourist attraction. Quite. Now, I say it was underwhelming, but to be honest, it was definitely worth the journey. Just even for the wildlife. Look at all these hummingbirds. But let's check out the store. Tourist trap. Antiquey type, type junk. Oh, they have Prince Albert in a can. <laughs> this, all this stuff creeps me out. No souvenir today, a little too pricey. But this, right here, made the entire trip worth it. You know, most of the places that you go to say, don't feed the animals. Well, not here, they encourage it. In fact, this little fella is expecting it. Sadly, I didn't have anything for the little guys. But I'm sure they put out a hit on me. That's weird. All right, it's raining now. And time to get out of here. Time to go back to the other side of the mountain. Other side of Old Smoky there, which you can't even see. One of the 14ers is right there, Mount Princeton. Ooh. Ooh. That's a cold rain, man. That's a mountain rain. It is a mountain rain. Ooh. So going up the mountain, we didn't pay much attention to the splendor that was going on all around us. We were just mostly paying attention to the road to make sure we were not gonna get lost in some mountain. But coming down the mountain is when the tunnel vision became a wide angle lens.
The stunning beauty in this canyon is simply picturesque. You can't see her right now, but behind those clouds is Mount Princeton. While we were here, we scouted out the three campgrounds that are in the canyon, and I think we found a candidate. I vote this campground most likely to encounter a bear. I think you might be, <laughs> I might agree with you on that. So concluded our little trek up Chalk Creek Canyon. We didn't even hit the hot springs today. I guess we'll have to do that one tomorrow. Ah, uh, it's no matter. At this point, all I want to do is get all the dirt that had no garnets in it out of my hair and have a hot meal. So I guess we'll pick up in the morning. Well, good morning, everybody. We have completed our second night out here at Chalk Creek Campground, and uh, I know I'm in the same clothes as yesterday. Give me a break. I just got up a little bit ago, but we're starting to pack up because we've got tickets to go over to them hot springs there. Now, I don't know if we're going to be allowed to take this camera in there. Probably not. So you might not see anything from there. But uh, anyway, yeah, this was great. Wasn't a lot of footage from last night either because our neighbors came over and we just hung out, talked by the campfire and, you know, hung out. It was good stuff. So yeah, all good things must come to an end. We're gonna head on out of here today, but still got that one stop. And whether you see it or not, we're going there. <laughs> so, uh, cheers until then. So before we leave, I had to do something that I've always wanted to do, but wasn't quite brave enough to do with this new GoPro. Well, take a look at what I found quite by accident. See, I told you there was fish up in here. I just finished up at the Mount Princeton Hot Springs. Decided against bringing the camera in there, you know, probably not cool. Well, it's time to head home. Got a lot done today. Those hot springs were, I'm gonna be honest, just kind of underwhelming. For the price. Yeah, I mean, it was a bit, a bit expensive. They had a nice slide. But, you know, it was pretty much just human soup. But the best takeaway from this whole trip is we found so many other things to do here and new campsites. Yeah. I'm gonna find a nice little lookout, kind of quickly pop the camper back up and make some lunch, have a little picnic, because I'm hungry. We, we skipped breakfast this morning. Really, I'll just boil down the whole hot spring experience to one thing. It is too hot for hot springs. Probably great in the spring or the fall, but in the middle of summer, not so much. Now it's time to find a lunch spot because like I said, we're hungry. A little rest stop here, right by the Arkansas River. It's a little recreation here. What was it called? Something bridge. Valley. Val Valley bridge? Valley bridge. It's spelled weird. Yeah. But we're gonna pop up the camper real quick and we're gonna have lunch here. Sandwiches by the river. We got a river rafting group coming through. That'd be fun. Maybe someday.
Okay, so remember this? So all the really cool stuff is inside. Ooh, really? Only five bucks each? I still don't understand why I did not buy that. Sometimes you get second chances at this. All right, if you watched last week's or the last episode, then you know I was kicking myself that I didn't buy a certain Geo. Well, we're back. And if it's still there, that same one, I'm buying it. I just couldn't resist. I had to know. But one way or another, I am not leaving empty handed this time. It's not here. I would have recognized it. Hmm. That could be fun. I'm looking, I've got my eyes on this one. Good point. All right. So they didn't have the same geode that I was after from last week, but I did. I did one better. This is way more fun. I bought two completely uncracked, unopened geodes, which means there's, I guess, a possibility that there's nothing in there. <laughs> but you know, that'll be fun. Now, of course, I'm gonna have to do a little research when I get home on how do you crack these open. Okay, so the video's not over yet. I'm ending this one a little bit different. Remember those geodes? Got my geodes here. I'm gonna pop these bad boys open. I have no idea how long this is gonna take, what kind of work it's gonna be. Um, I thought I had a chisel. I do not. I'm sure that they are, in fact, a tough nut to crack. So, let's get started here. Sparks? That was weird. Wasn't expecting that. Holy crap. This thing's insane. Nobody said it would be this hard. We'll keep going. Ah yes, brute force to the rescue. Ooh. That's much better. Holy moly. Okay, just great. Now it looks like I've got another new addiction. Yep, I think every time I pass that rock shop, I'm gonna be buying some more geodes. Anyways, look at this haul. How beautiful is this? It's amazing to think that for tens of thousands of years, none of these crystals have seen light until I came along and ruined their day. And that, guys, is a wrap, as they say, for this episode. I hope you all have enjoyed Chalk Creek, Mount Princeton, and the surrounding area. Man, I know I did, and if you get the chance, do not miss. It's just further proof, y'all, that you don't need a lot of time to make these kind of memories. So get on out there and explore what's close to you. In the meantime, though, thank you so much for watching. And please, share with anybody you think might be interested in this kind of channel. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram for more recent updates. And stay tuned, as in the next episode, we're going to explore one really, really big sandbox. Until then, cheers.